Welcome into Gear Heart Radio, ladies and gentlemen. Joining me on the phone right now, one of the founding members of REO Speedwagon. Welcome on, Mr. Neil Dowdy. Neil, how's it going today? I'm doing just fine. We're out on the road finally after almost a year and a half, and we're having fun. We're we're playing better than we ever did, I think. We got rested up, and then we rehearsed for, oh, intensely for a couple of weeks, and we came right out of the gate, ready to go. Yeah, it's so awesome to see concerts coming back and all the bands hitting the road. It's a beautiful thing, but speaking about quarantine... I'm like a lot of the world. During that whole experience, one thing that I done was stay inside, sit on the couch, and watch TV. And one show that I really got into was a show on Netflix called Ozark. And for those who haven't checked out the show, y'all had a special appearance during last year's season. And I was not expecting to see Ario Speedwagon on Ozark. How did all of that come about? You know... I, I'm I, I'm pretty sure our manager pulled that off, but but um, when I heard about it, I mean we were on season two, I guess, and and um, that had already been like my favorite show on Netflix. My wife and I would binge episodes of that show till late hours, and. All of a sudden, the uh, management calls up and says, you guys are going to actually be in an episode of Ozark. And I totally freaked out. And some of the guys hadn't seen it. And I said, you got to go watch it right now. Watch every episode to see what a good show we're going to be on. And it was just really fun. I mean, it, it, um, it took half a day to do it. And we got to hang out with Jason Bateman, who is just a really nice guy. He's been in this acting business his whole life, so uh, he's pretty normal. And um, uh, it was just so much fun. And and, uh, and, um, and then watching it, that was just really a treat. Well, well i got to say that I'm glad that they didn't kill y'all off like they do every other character on that show. I'm glad that y'all stuck well, around for the entire episode. Yeah, well, maybe they kill us off in season three. I don't know. We're, we haven't found out. But uh, I think that's going to be our only appearance. It was, it was tied in the first two episodes of that season. They're talking about they have a big private convention of dentists who want REO Speedwagon. So, you know, we got, we got some name drops there uh, in the first two episodes. And then <laughs> there's a great yeah. line where Marty goes up to his boss among the drug cartel and he says i just laundered a hundred thousand dollars at an ario speedwagon concert so <laughs> we're always uh, we're always glad to help a poor guy launder a hundred thousand dollars you know although it hasn't happened in reality but um yeah that was great i could talk about that for hours but you probably don't have that much time but, well, I do got to say congratulations on 40 years of High Infidelity and the album recently going 10 times platinum. That is just an amazing accomplishment. I got to ask, whenever the band was making this record, did y'all have any idea how big this album was going to be for y'all? I don't think so. I, um, I mean, you always think your next record is going to be the one that really does it, but by the time we were getting done with this record, I was starting to realize that I really liked it. Now, you know, sometimes you work on a, on a, on a record for three or four months and you just don't even want, I, uh, you know, personally would just like not even want to hear it for six months after we were done uh, with all that work. And this one, I came right out of the studio and it was my favorite album. I mean, I had a cassette of it before it was ever released. And I listened to that thing constantly. So I'm going, wow, if I like it after all that time in the studio that it took to do it, you know, maybe this time is different. And I remember seeing it work its way up the charts. And of course, that song Kevin brought in, Keep on Loving You, we thought we might have something there with that song although, although we'd mainly been doing more of a 70s harder rock type thing and and i said kevin i don't know if they really want this love ballad from us and he, 
And he said, well, trust me. And I did, and it worked. It really is an amazing album. In my opinion, there's not a bad song on it. But the very first time that I listened to High Infidelity in its entirety, one part that threw me off a little bit was the Little Rascal snippet there at the beginning of Tough Guys. Whenever I flipped that vinyl record over, I was not expecting to hear Spanky and Alfalfa on an Ario Speedwagon song. What made y'all include that on the album? Well, you know, um, we uh, the song Tough Guys, obviously, I thought, uh, like I was a fan of the, all those Little Rascals um, um, films, you know, or, uh, and I mean, they're still playing today. And um, so we were working on Tough Guys, and I actually fell asleep with the TV on one night, and, and like two in the morning... I heard the familiar sound of the little rascals and I and I went and I ran over and punched record because I knew that this episode was the one where Darla says that to him and Spanky mentions the He Man Woman Haters Club mm-hmm. and and Alfalfa just perfectly says, Well, you know, I gotta live my own life. And, and it is exactly what's being said in the song. So I took that VCR to the band and I said, we, we got to have this bit of dialogue in front of Tough Guys. And, and of course, it's one reason. I mean, on the old vinyl, you know, it's the beginning of side two is that snippet from the Rascals. And then that song starts. And to this day, we, I, you know, you're liable to hear that at a concert before we play that song you know um we got you know we went to the king brothers who owned all that um stuff and they were just thrilled that we wanted to use that that piece of their uh film on our album which turned out to be you know a big album and they you know we met a few of them on the road and they were just happy to let us do that so um someday i would like to get it with complete video of that scene and show that on a video screen but we um you know you uh, that might be a little harder to pull off but no they just they gave us the 16 millimeter original film and we took the audio off of that so wow very cool very cool yeah You know, I've always been a big Aria fan, and one thing that I've always appreciated about the music that your band makes is the honesty and realness in it. Like, I know that y'all make the hits, but those same hits talk about real-life struggles that I think that everybody can relate to in one form or another. And I was one to ask you this question. Was it ever difficult for the band to be so open about personal issues with the entire world through y'all's music? You know, I think, you know, I'm, I've am i written a couple of the songs, but, you know, Kevin and, and Gary Richrath, our original guitar player, they seem to think that's the best way to get it out of your system. And, and I've heard it said that the easiest songs to write are the true story. You can't just make stuff up. It has to be a true story to be a really good song. I wrote one song, One Lonely Night, and that was a true story. And it was the only good song I ever wrote. Uh, Fortunately, I didn't have enough good true stories like the rest of these guys. But um, a a lot of songwriters will tell you that if you you just try to make something up, the song's not going to be as sincere and uh, it's it's way better if it's a true story and that has worked for us yeah i know that high infidelity was a very personal album for all the members in the band do you think that that may be one thing that related to the success of the album was how the listeners could relate to it absolutely i mean we were all going through some crazy stuff in our personal lives i was going through a really bad breakup and and Kevin was having a few problems too, and uh, you know that kind of uh, like the whole album was a true story, uh, you know, not just song by song, but 
the the title was just perfect, you know, for of the album. And, you know, Kevin brought that in, too. He said, let's call this High Infidelity. And we go, not only is that a great pun, but it's like the true story of what we went through while we were making this record. So once again, you know, the, the true stories went out every time. Okay, now I got one final question for you today. I love getting a chance to ask bands this question because it's always interesting to hear the answers. As I understand it, it was you that came up with the name Ario Speedwagon. In my opinion, one of the greatest band names in rock and roll history. How did the name of the group come about? Well, it was an actual name of an old truck that... Um, Ransom Eli Olds, that's what the R-E-O stands for, uh, he got in a big fight at GM over the Oldsmobile that he designed, and he started his own company, and his REO Speedwagon was a, a high-speed, heavy-duty truck for its day, and um, I, was t- I was in engineering at University of Illinois, and I was in a kind of a history of transportation kind of a class, and I swear, the the day we decided we better have a name for the band because we had, we wanted to start getting some shows, you know, some work on campus. And the next day I walked in and that name was written across the whole front of the of the classroom on the blackboard. And he started going into this was a milestone in transportation because it could go high speed and also be heavy duty. And I'm going, wow, high speed, heavy duty. That that's rock and roll, you know. And I brought it to the guys. They loved it instantly. There was never even another name that was considered. Well, speaking about transportation, I know that you and the rest of the guys got to get on the road this evening, so we're going to let you get to it. Neil, thanks again, buddy. Okay, thank you.